Yes, love our mamas. My kids brought me breakfast this morning and then proceeded to eat all the breakfast. So love our kiddos on Mother's Day. Good morning. My name is Jillian Armstrong, and I am so delighted to be with y'all this morning. Thank you. Um, thank you. If you don't know me, my husband Matthew and I have been part of this church since the beginning, which is almost nine years ago, which is so mind-blowing to me. And yeah, I'm just really happy to be here. We have not been around on Sundays because for the past couple months, I've been undergoing chemotherapy for breast cancer. I was diagnosed in January, and it's been a pretty intense journey so far, and my doctor has encouraged me to kind of stay away from large crowds. But I'm so thankful that even though I haven't been able to be here in person, Matthew and our family, we have experienced the body of Christ in the church in such beautiful ways. We have felt so cared for by you guys bringing us meals, caring for our kids, sending us cards, and church family all over the United States. We have truly experienced the body of Christ, and that has been so meaningful to us. And as you can probably imagine, the last couple months have been pretty hard for us, from finding out the diagnosis and just that shocking news to me losing all my hair and going through chemo and some really intense chemotherapy. I'm so glad I've switched to a different drug that has really been a lot better for me and my body has responded differently. But it has been a journey physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually in every way. But I do want to just say that I have experienced the love and nearness and faithfulness of God so abundantly. And I'm not just saying that to you because I'm preaching this sermon. It is true. And yes, there have been times of weeping, times of fear and anxiety, but there has also been just the tender care of Jesus as I've been able to make my home in the presence of God. And that's what I want to share with you all this morning, that as believers, we are able to make our home in the presence of God. And when we do that, we can experience life even in hardship and even in trial. And this is a message that I heard back in college. I heard a woman talk about making our home in the presence of God. And I honestly don't remember all the details of it, but that concept has stuck with me over the years. And it's then been one that I've really come back to recently. And so I just want to share that with you guys this morning. So what do you think of when you think of home? What comes to mind? For me, there's a couple of things. One is my home here in Baton Rouge, specifically my bed. My husband and I laugh that when we get, we have three little kids, so when we put them to bed and when we get in our bed and turn on the light and read or watch TV, we're just like, thank you, Lord. This is the only place I want to be right now. And just that sense of relaxation and calm. I also think of my parents' house in Dallas. I grew up in Dallas, so going back there is just such a sense of home for me. And even though my parents don't live where I grew up, it's still just being with them is a sense of home for me. And I also think about my grandmother's house in Michigan. She lives in a little thousand-person town in a tiny yellow cottage. And we grew up going every summer to Michigan and a lot of Christmases. And when I envision driving up to her house, I just feel that sense of, yes, I belong here. I'm safe here. And that is what home is meant to be. It's meant to be a place where we feel safe, where we feel comfortable, where we feel like I can be who I am. And I know there's people here who maybe you don't have that experience. Maybe there isn't a place where you truly feel that you can just be yourself, that you can be vulnerable, that you can be safe. But I think we can all relate to either having a home or longing for a home. And God invites us to find home in him. For me, when I go to my doctor's appointments, they always ask, are you safe at home? Because they want to make sure, as a person with a serious disease, they want to make sure that I have somewhere to go where I can feel 
taken care of where I can feel completely safe. And I'm so thankful that I can say, yes, I feel at home with my husband. I feel at home there in, my phys- in that physical space. But recently, although, yes, I feel at home in my home, I have had this experience of not even feeling at home in my own physical body. I've spent a lot of time as an adult feeling like a healthy, energetic, lively person. And so to then have this disease and have this treatment that really not, can knock me out for a few days, it's been alarming and shocking to feel like, wait, my body is betraying me. What's going on? To feel that sense of fatigue. And maybe some of you can relate to that. Maybe you have a ongoing chronic illness or maybe you are young and healthy and, not, and you don't have an illness, but you can relate to that feeling of desiring somewhere you can just feel at home and feel safe and feel like yourself. And so I just want to say today that God is inviting you. He is inviting us to make our home in his presence. So I want to look at some scripture and just share some revelations about this. Let's look at Psalm 84. So I'm going to read the whole thing. So you can either read it with me on the screen or just close your eyes and receive this scripture. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man or woman who trusts in you. I absolutely love this psalm. It's so lyrical and calming and beautiful. And when this psalm was written, it's important for us to remember that the dwelling place of God was the temple. In the Old Testament, there was the temple. And under the Old Covenant, there was a veil that separated worshipers from the holy presence of God. And only the high priest could go into that place. Worshippers had to bring sacrifice and prayer, and they could not enter at any time they chose. But for us, the dwelling place of God is in us. Because of the Holy Spirit, because of Jesus' work on the cross, the veil was torn down, and now we as believers are able to come to God, to come to his presence at any time, anywhere, and be with him. In Hebrews 10, it talks about how we can have confidence to enter the holy places, and this is accomplished by the blood of Jesus. This means that the breaking of Jesus' body at the crucifixion is the unprecedented means by which believers have access to the power of God and the presence of God. We can access God at any time, anywhere. I love Psalm 139 that says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. It can be so easy for us, for me, 
to turn to different things when we're in pain, when we're in hardship, when we feel like we have failed or fallen short. And trust me, I can watch TV and eat ice cream in bed with the best of them. I can do that. I can veg out. But for me, the place that I have truly experienced a source of life is with Jesus. There was a doctor's appointment a couple month, month or so ago. Where I was just really feeling anxious beforehand. I just felt that anxiety coursing through my body. And I just decided, look, I'm going to just turn on worship music in my kitchen and dance with my girls. And I am not a good dancer. I have zero rhythm. It was not pretty to behold. But for me, just dancing in the presence of God with my little girls, just twirling and listening to the worship music, the truth of God's faithfulness and love and presence, I just felt that anxiety drain out of me. I felt God lifting me up and filling me. And it didn't mean that every place of fear was gone or every place of worry was gone, but it meant that I could walk into that feeling his presence and his nearness and his goodness and his faithfulness. And when we go to Jesus, when he is who we turn to in those times, he will always meet us and he will always be, be near to us. And even as much as I love going to church, I've been in church all my life, love going to church, love going to life group, love going to retreats, love going to conferences, love getting up early in the morning with my coffee and Bible. That's not the only place I can experience God. I can experience him when I'm driving in the car, taking a shower, going to the grocery store. All it takes is turning my attention to him, and the, he is there. He is waiting for us and ready for us to turn his, our attention to him and find him in that place. I love how verse 3 says that even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. And this simple verse re reveals two things to us. One is that when we find our home in the presence of God, we find a place that's safe and nurturing and we also find a place that where we can be completely vulnerable and completely real. You know, we often talk about the father heart of God, which is beautiful and powerful. We don't often as much look at what the Bible says about the mothering care and nurture of God. But there's some really beautiful verses and imagery that talk about God mothering us and caring for us and nurturing us. Isaiah 66, 13 says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted. Psalm 91, 4 says, He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You know, all three of our little girls, they're six, three and a half, and one, and they all adore their daddy, my husband Matthew. They love and adore him and want to be near him. But when one of them, especially the older two, when one of them gets hurt, they do this very annoying, honestly, <laughs> and laughable thing where if Matthew's there trying to comfort them, they're just like, no! And they're just like pushing him away. And he's like, I'm just trying to take you to mom. And they do not want him. They don't want anything to do with him. They want mommy. And there's something about mama that brings a nurturing and a care and a comfort to little kids. And maybe that's in their physical pain or an emotional pain. For us, that might be our emotional or spiritual pain that we're bringing to God. And we need that comfort. We need that gentleness. We need that nurturing of God, the mothering of God. And I, I know, I absolutely know that there are people in this room that maybe their, your relationship with your mom is more complicated. Maybe that's a place of lack in your life. Or maybe there's mamas here that feel like you have fallen short in some way. And I want to tell you today that God wants to mother you in that place. He wants to mother you in that place of pain or disappointment. And he wants to extend his nurturing, comforting care in those places. God sees every detail of our life. And he is able to mother us 
through every season of our life. He's that kind, that gentle, that caring, and that nurturing. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a woman forget her child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. God cares about the smallest things in life. This reference to the sparrow reminds me of Matthew 10, 29, which says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And, you know, it can often feel like maybe God only cares about the big things in life or the people that are doing the big things for him, whatever that means. But the truth is that God cares about the small details of life. Every thought, every concern, every care, he sees it all and he cares about it all. In addition to knowing that God can care for us in in his presence, we can also be completely vulnerable in his presence. I love the reference to the swallow building a nest for her young. The nest is obviously a symbol for home, and it's also a symbol for, for vulnerability because those eggs are vulnerable. So a bird needs a safe place to care for her young. Being a mom, being a parent, is extremely vulnerable. You know, I've, I've heard it talked about as you're just supposed to let your heart just walk around and go to school without you and get their driver's license and go to college and get married. It's a vulnerable place. I know Briley is doing driving lessons, and that honestly freaks me out because I've known her since she was born. So I can't even imagine how Donnie and Brianna feel about this little tiny baby trying to go off and drive. It's a vulnerable place as a parent. And I honestly have never felt more vulnerable as a mother than in this past season. You know, there's been weekends after treatment where I just literally have to be in bed all weekend. And even though we've had incredible care from our both of our parents, Matthew, sweet, sweet friends, it's just still so vulnerable to not to be able to take care of your own children. And then even when I have been able to take care of them, sometimes I haven't had the energy to discipline them or correct them like maybe I should. And honestly, some of my parents, you know, I thought, oh, I know all this about parenting, and that's really gone out the window. And I've had to release that tight grip of control to God and trust him. As parents and as people with our lives, we are able to come to God in our vulnerability in those places where we feel the most vulnerable and the most uncovered and release that to God. In parenting or otherwise, he can handle it. He can handle our vulnerability. And honestly, more than handle it, he delights in it. He delights in our weakness. You know, as Christians, we really like to say, oh, when, when we're weak, God is strong. We really like to say that. But when it actually comes down to it, We do not like that. We want to be strong. We live in a church culture, not just the world culture. There's a church culture at large where we really embrace strength. and We celebrate strength. And when people bring their struggles to us, we're kind of like, okay, well, here's five things that you can do to get better. Or when we feel weak in ourselves, we often want to minimize our weakness. We often want to cover up our weakness. It's really hard to feel and to be exposed in weakness. We don't often actually embrace 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 11, which says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. And I don't know about you, but I do not delight in any of those things. But I want to. I want to believe that when I am weak, that is when God is strong. That I don't have to minimize my weakness. I can be honest, 
that I don't have to pull other people too quickly out of a place of weakness, but I can encourage them to bring that to God, whether that's a physical weakness, spiritual, emotional, mental, it doesn't matter. We can bring it all to him. Can we be people who do that, who encourage each other in that place, who encourage and celebrate the strength of God, not I'm going to grit my teeth and bear it and get through this, but I'm going to release this and I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to use it for a powerful work in my life. Yes. When we are home in the presence of God, we can bring our true selves to him and let him know exactly what's going on because he sees us, he loves us, he covers us, and he cares for us. And this ties right into Psalm, or into verses 5 and 6 in Psalm 84. It says, blessed are those whose strength is in you who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Baca means weeping. And the psalmist here is recognizing that in every person's life, there are going to be times of weeping. There's going to be times that are hard. There are trials and hardships. And we bring, when we bring those places to God, when we make our home in the presence of God, he is the one that is literally our strength, that is literally carrying us through. And then those are able to be turned into times where we experience the refreshment of God and the life of God and the strength of God. He is the one carrying us. This entire passage really reminds me of the life of Jesus. In Luke 9, there's a man who's saying to Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. And Jesus tells him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus did not have a physical home. His home was the presence of God. And he was able to go anywhere, to do anything at any time, because he went in God's presence. And that same thing is true of us. We see in the life of Jesus that he continually found rest and refreshment in God. We see that he brought his human vulnerability to God. We see that Jesus acted in strength because of God's power in him. We see that Jesus wept and he acknowledged his grief and his sadness before God. We see that he taught his followers and he teaches us that when we know him, we have the Holy Spirit and we can find life and comfort in him. Again, Jesus was able to go anywhere and do anything at any time because his home was in the presence of God. And not only did Jesus find his home in the presence of God, he invited other people to that same reality. And when we find our home in the presence of God, we are able to invite other people into that home. Recently, when Matthew and I had our 10-year anniversary, we went to New Orleans for the weekend, and we had a lot of good food, and we had a great time, but we also went to counseling, which was so refreshing and so powerful. And the people who we met with, they meet with people in their home. And when we walked into their home, I just felt this, oh, their home is beautiful. It's tastefully and simply decorated. There's books everywhere, which I personally love. And there's beautiful artwork on the, on the walls. And actually, when I sat down on the couch to meet with them, I was like, can I just take off my wig? And I just took off my wig, and I just felt this, like, relaxation. And they loved that, and they welcomed that. And when we go into people's homes, we get a glimpse of who they are and what they're all about. And when we were meeting with this couple and they're counseling us and they're preparing lunch for us, there were so many things that they were doing that I was like, I want to do that in my home. 
And the same thing is true of us. When we invite people into our lives and when our home is in the presence of God, then they can start experiencing that as well. When they're around us, they can feel like, oh, I can be vulnerable with this person. I can be safe with this person. I can bring my weakness to this person. And we are able to offer a place of home to other people. When we... When our home is in the presence of God, we don't keep that joy in life just to ourselves. We welcome other people into that place by serving people, by loving people, by ministering to people, and by being open with who we are. I want to close with this. When we say that we feel at home somewhere, it's usually a place that we've been to more than one or two times, right? When we are, feel at home, it's somewhere we are comfortable that we've been over and over and over and over again. And the same thing is true, that it, as believers, if we want our home to be in the presence of God, we have to have gone to his presence. We have to have practiced coming to him over and over and over again so that it really does become a place of familiarity for us so that when something happens in our life that turns us upside down that's shocking and tragic and difficult we go to the place that feels most familiar and if we've practiced that it can be in God's presence that feels the most familiar that feels the most safe We cultivate a home in God's presence by coming to him again and again. As I close, I want to read these last verses over us as a prayer and as a blessing. And actually, if you'll just stand with me as I read this over us. You can just close your eyes if you want or open your hands. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O oh Lord Almighty, blessed is the man or the woman who trusts in you. God, may we become people who know that the safest, most nurturing place for us is in your presence. May we be people that believe that nothing else can fill us like your presence does. May we understand that before you, we can be vulnerable and known and deeply cared for. And that as we know and experience those things, we would offer that to other people as well, that we would invite them into your presence, into making a home in you. Jesus, I pray that we would be people who come to you over and over and over again. That we would make a practice of coming to you when times feel more joyful and easy so that when things are harder, it would be a place of familiarity and a place of comfort and a place of home. And that we would know that we are always welcome, that you never turn us away. And even if it's been a while since we've been home, that's okay. There is a place for us in your presence. 
I would like to just invite the prayer team to come forward. And this morning, if this is something that resonates with you, if you are desiring to be a person whose home is truly nowhere else but in God's presence, we would love to pray for you. And also, if there is any place of just pain or disappointment in your heart today on Mother's Day specifically, whatever that may look like, we would love to pray over you this morning. And lastly, if you have any physical ailment or need any healing in your body, we would love to pray for you for healing this morning. So as we worship together, just feel free to come forward, feel free to worship we bless you this morning. God, we bless you and thank you for your presence in Jesus' name.